Let's continue the discussion with some adult connective tissues. Right here at the first, we see a loose connective tissue, also called areolar. Good name for it because when you look at a histology slide of this tissue, you can see that all the fibers and cells are very loosely dispersed. In other words, there's a whole lot of space in between them, and collagen's a very dominant fiber type there. You can also see dense connective tissue. Here's where all the fibers are very tightly packed, very little space in between these. And notice how there's two different types of dense. Dense regular is where they're tightly packed, and the fibers are oriented primarily in one direction. Well, I'll give you a lot of strength in one direction, but not many. And then there's dense irregular, still tightly packed, but now the fibers are oriented in many directions. So that'll give you strength in many directions instead of one. We'll look at some adipose tissue, some reticular. Cartilage, we'll see the three different types in the next video. Two different types of bone in the next one. And then blood, and then also hemopoietic tissue. That's the bone marrow where all those blood cells are being made. Now look at the loose areolar connective tissue. Look at that histology slide. Look at all the space between the fibers and cells. That is exactly why it's called loose. Good place to find this is in the hypodermis, a layer just below your skin. Collagen's the dominant fiber type, so that's gonna make it strong. There'll be some reticular fibers. They're actually a smaller, thin strand type of collagen. Few elastic, but mostly collagen. And look at the different cell types you'll see. One of them will be fibroblast. Remember, any cell with blast in the name is a builder. So those are fiber building cells. You'll see mast cells, also called basophils when they're in the blood. Those cells are a type of white blood cells where a lot of inflammatory chemicals come from. Lymphocytes, another important type of white blood cell. Those have a great deal to do with immunity. Adipocytes, these are fat cells. Few of those will be scattered in this layer, that hypodermis. And then macrophages, also called a monocyte in the blood, are a very large type of white blood cell. Good at phagocytizing, eating things. Now look at the dense versus the loose we just looked at. The dense regular collagenous connective tissue will be very tightly packed. Notice you don't see near the space in between these fibers like you did those last ones. Regular means they're pretty much all oriented in the same direction. And collagen's the dominant fiber. So that's gonna give a large amount of strength in one direction. Remember, collagen's like little steel cables are very strong. Good example of where you'll find this type of tissue are tendons and ligaments. So structurally, they are the same thing. A lot of collagen fibers tightly packed and oriented in the same direction. But tendons connect muscle to bone where ligaments are bone to bone. Here's dense, regular, elastic connective tissue. Still densely packed. Regular tells you they're pretty much all oriented same direction, but now the fibers are elastic instead of collagen. Those are gonna stretch and give. Your vocal cords are a very good example of where you find these. Then there's dense irregular collagenous. So densely, tightly packed. Irregular means the fibers are oriented in many directions and collagen's the dominant type of fiber. So if you look at this picture over here, you can see in more of this purple color, that's the outer epidermis, that's the superficial layer of your skin. But then there's this dermal layer down below it. And with those collagen fibers oriented in many directions, that gives strength in many directions. Look at like the leather on a cow. That is the dermal layer from their skin. With all that collagen, that makes for a very strong material. You'll also sometimes see this type of connective tissue surrounding and enclosing organs, what's called a capsule. Looks like a connective tissue layer around kidneys, spleen, lymph nodes, and other structures. Scars also have a lot of this material in it. Now we have dense irregular elastic. So we swap from collagen to elastic fibers. Tightly packed, irregular arrangement, but with elastic fibers being dominant, these are gonna be stretchy. So if you look at the wall of an artery, you probably heard about hardening of arteries as you get older. When arteries are young and healthy, they're very elastic. Helps to stabilize your blood pressure. It's definitely very good for you. Connective tissue with special properties, one of them's adipose. Here you're talking about fat cells, fat tissue. So notice there's dominantly two different types, the yellow and the brown. Now the yellow can also be called white adipose tissue. We're very young before we've eaten very many different types of materials. It'll be snow white. But then after you eat some materials, you get things like carotenes from plants and other things such as that. They stain it a bit. There are other things that accumulate in adipose tissue besides just fats. So then it starts to look just a little bit yellow. But you can still see where the 
uh, borders of the cell are at. We'll see that on the histology slide here in a second. Then there's brown adipose tissue. It makes up maybe 10% of the adipose tissue in the body. And this here is primarily about heat generation. You'll find this in the axillary region, neck, and near your kidneys. Here's a good histology picture of adipose tissue. Now remember, what this is full of is lipids or fats. The stain they put on here is water soluble, so it won't soak into those lipids, but it will accumulate in between them. So notice you can see the borders where the cell membrane is at. Adipose tissue generally looks like empty cells, even though it's not. It looks sort of like an empty honeycomb. Here we've got some others, reticular tissue. Now reticular tissue is full of reticular fibers. And again, technically that's a very thin strand type of collagen. Good place to find this is in the lymphatic system. Hemopoietic tissue. If you look at that, that's also called red bone marrow. Now the lymphatic system is a good place to find it. It forms what's almost like a net in things like lymph nodes. It cleans and filters fluid, catches large materials as the fluid goes through it. And the lymphocytes also use this as a structure. They'll be sure and get rid of anything in the body you don't want that these fibers trap. So there's a little histology picture of it. And there's actually some adipose tissue shown off to the right side. 